taking a trip down memory lane at this point. It's time for This Week in History. We're starting in 1963 when little Stevie Wonder, age 13, released his first single called Fingertips. Now, this was the first live non-studio recording to go number one on the Billboard charts. Now, it was written and composed by Stevie Wonder's mentors, Clarence Paul and Heron Cosby. And Fingertips was originally a jazz instrumental recorded for Wonder's first studio album. Now, the jazz soul of Stevie Wonder by the tender age of 10 is when that came out. And uh, the boy Wonder, who could sing and play piano and drums, uh, was snapped up by Motown Records a year later. Hearing him messing around with instruments in the studio, Motown boss Barry Gordy Jr. marveled out loud about this boy uh, who was a wonder, and that name stuck. And there was no doubting Stevie Wonder's talent. And uh, eventually, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama in 2014, regularly sat in on sessions for other Motown artists, and played everything from the keyboards to the bongos. Amazing. Ah, amazing. Now, it was interesting for me to note that uh, he has 21 Grammys, and never in any of the profiles I found online was it mentioned that he's visually challenged. It's all about the music. Still heading back down memory lane here, 1949, June 22nd, American actress Meryl Streep was born. She's presently 71 years old and is widely considered the greatest actress of her generation, if not all time. She's won three Academy Awards out of 21 nominations and a record for a number of nominations, by the way. She's also received 31 Glo Golden Globe nominations with eight wins and... Um, they're both more than any other actor has been nominated or won in history. Streep won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Kramer vs. Kramer and Best Actress for her roles in Sophie's Choice and playing Margaret Thatcher in The Iron Lady in 2011. In addition to these roles, she has some other major notable roles as the French Lieutenant's Woman in 1981, Out of Africa, uh, Bridges of Madison County, uh, Adaptation, The Devil Wears Prada, um, Doubt, um, Julie and Julia. Then there was a really great one that just came out uh, recently. Uh, well, well, it's not that recent anymore. 2014, she did the musical Into the Woods. And of course, Mamma Mia. Amazing stuff. Uh, the one I watched last was uh, from 2017's The Post. And she's particularly renowned for her ability to different and even more amazing every single every single movie and now we're moving on uh, 1868 a little further back now june 23rd american newspaper editor christopher lathan shoals was granted a patent on this day for a typewriter now there have been many other claims uh, by others to have invented the machine but shoals is the one who first got the commercially successful model and uh, nobody really knows what the machine looked like back then but um, these machines that could also pass as a typewriter had an issue. The keyboard was arranged alphabetically back then, just as anyone would expect. But as operators learned to type at speed, it was discovered that the metal arms bearing each character often became entangled. Scholl studied the problem with his partner, Amos Densmore, and worked out which letters were most often used, and then put them as far apart as possible on the new keyboard called the QWERTY keyboard. That's the Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Now it's still in use today, even on our cell phones, and that was the day it was born. And uh, he's often described it as a blessing to mankind. Remington were highly impressed and offered to buy the patent, and Scholes agreed and sold it for $12,000 and half his share. Right now, he still, well, his family members still uh, get some of those royalties, and it's estimated to be about $1.5 million to each partner today. Yeah, that was a gentleman that made typing for you on your cell phone so easy. Big shout out to Shoals.